Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this series. In the last video, we discussed how to enable and test password write back in Azure Active Directory. We discussed what permissions you need to assign on the on-premise service account, what changes are required in group policy, what changes you need to do in Azure AD Connect and in Azure Active Directory, and how an administrator can verify if the password reset or password change activity was successful or not. In this particular video, we will be talking about password protection in Azure Active Directory. We will talk about password policies in Azure AD. We will discuss what are the banned passwords, what is banned password list, how it works, we will discuss how the passwords are evaluated in Azure Active Directory. And then I will demonstrate to you how to configure banned password list in Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory has predefined password policies. Those are applied to the users and administrator accounts if they are directly managed in Azure Active Directory. These policies are applied while creating the passwords, changing the password, or while resetting a password. So let's talk about these policies in detail. According to Azure Active Directory password policies, your passwords can have uppercase characters, lowercase characters, numbers, special symbols, and even you can use a blank space. But you cannot use Unicode characters in your password. The length of the password should be minimum eight characters, and maximum it can be 256 characters. When we talk about complexity of the password, your password require three out of four these categories. Uppercase characters, lowercase characters, numbers or symbols. When a user changes or resets his password, the new password cannot be the same as the current or recently used passwords. Apart from these password policies, Azure Active Directory has predefined password expiration policies as well. Password expiration duration defines age of a password. That means after how many days the password should expire and the users will require to change their passwords. The default value for this property is 90 days. And if an administrator wants to change this value, he can use set hyphen msol password policy command in Azure AD PowerShell module. Next property of password expiration policy is password expiration notification. This value is also in days. This property is configured to send email notifications of password expiration. For example, if this value is set to 14 days, users will receive email notification before 14 days of password expiration date. This property can also be modified using PowerShell. As an administrator, you can use set hyphen msol password policy command in Azure Active Directory module to modify this particular property. And the last property of password expiration policy is password expiry. The default value for this property is false. If this value is set to false, that means the password has an expiration date. But if you want that password should not expire for a particular account, you can use set hyphen msol user PowerShell command and you can modify this property to true. Now, one thing that you should be aware of is these password policies or password expiration policies are not applied to the users who are getting synchronized from on-premise Active Directory using Azure AD Connect. If you want Azure AD password policies to be applied to the synchronized accounts, you need to enable and force cloud password policy for password synced users. This is a feature of Azure Active Directory that enforces the Azure AD password policies to the on-premise users. So these password policies are applied to the users when they reset or change their passwords, or when an administrator creates a password for a new user account. But when it comes to choose a password, users can choose any password of their choice. It can be as simple as test1234 or password1234, or even they can use the name of their organization where they are working. 
for example contour so at one two three four but these type of passwords are very common and can be hacked easily azure active directory maintains a global banned password list that automatically detects and blocks the non-weak passwords whenever a weak password is used or a basic term is used within the password these terms are automatically added within global banned password list. As an administrator, you cannot modify this list or you can't even disable it. This list is enabled by default and is applied to all the users and administrator accounts in your Azure AD tenant. But as an administrator, you can also add certain terms or words that your users should not use in their passwords. This type of list is called custom band password list under this list you can add commonly used terms or words for example your company name name of a location or brand names when you add these terms within custom band password list they are automatically combined with the terms in the global band password list so when a user will try to change or reset his password or even an administrator will create or reset a user's password the passwords will be validated against both password list and if the characters selected by the users are already listed within the global or custom band password list user will not be able to reset or change his password and he will get one of these errors unfortunately you can't use that password because it contains words or characters that have been blocked by your administrator please try again with a different password or choose a password that is harder for people to guess now this is the end user experience but as an administrator you should also know how the passwords are evaluated by azure active directory when a password is created first it goes through the normalization process this process has two parts first it converts all uppercase letters to the lowercase letters and then it performs common character substitutions that means zero is substituted to o one to l dollar is substituted to s and at is substituted to a let's consider one example let's assume an administrator has added contoso in custom band password list so when a user will try to create a password using contoso term or let's say he has selected a password that is similar to this example so the normalization process will first convert all the uppercase letters to the lowercase letters and the substitution process will convert the original letters to the substituted letters so finally this particular password will be rejected because it is added within the custom band password list after normalization the next password evaluation step is fuzzy matching behavior fuzzy matching is used on the normalized password to identify if it contains a password that is found on either global or the custom band password list let's assume an administrator has added a b c d e f pattern within the custom band password list and a user is trying to set his password with a similar pattern so even if the user will add or remove a particular character within his password that password will still be rejected because this pattern is added within custom band password list after normalization and fuzzy matching behavior passwords are evaluated for substring matching substring matching is used on the normalized passwords to check for the user's first and last name and the tenant name as well for example let's assume a user with name bob ross is trying to change his password after normalization this password would become as bob ross 1234 substring matching will find that this user's first and last name is bob ross even though you haven't added Bob Ross in band password list, this password will be rejected. Now, after these three steps, the next step is to assign a score to the password. According to the password score calculation, 
the passwords that have at least five points only those passwords will be accepted by azure ad password protection these points are given to the passwords on the basis of two conditions each band password that is found in a user's password is given one point and each remaining character that is not part of the band password list is given one point let's consider a couple of examples to understand how this score calculation is done let's say we have added contoso in custom band password list and blank is added in global band password list a user is trying to change his password to this one after normalization process the password will become as contoso blank 12 the matching process will find that this password contains two band passwords contoso and blank then this password will get a score of 4 because this password has two band passwords and it has two characters apart from the band passwords but this password will still be rejected because it has a score less than 5 points let's consider one more example let's say this user is trying to change his password to this one so after normalization process this password will become like this substring matching process will find that this password contains two band passwords contoso and blank then this password will be given a score of five points and this password will be accepted because it has five points so this is how password evaluation is done in azure active directory now let's understand what are the prerequisites those are required for using password protection feature in azure active directory to configure custom band password list you need azure ad premium p1 license self-service password reset should be enabled in your tenant so that you can test the password change operation using a band password and you need an account with global administrator privileges so let's move towards our lab and let me show you how to configure and test band password list in azure active directory to access password protection console you will go to active directory and then you will go to security under security you will click on authentication methods and then you will click password protection now from here you can manage the custom band password list and you can manage the lockout threshold and lockout duration in seconds so let's talk about these properties one by one Lockout threshold defines that after how many wrong password attempts the account should be locked. By default, this value is 10. That means if a user will try to log in with a wrong password for 10 times, his password will be locked. Next is lockout duration in seconds. This value defines for how long that particular account should be locked. The default value is 60 seconds. That means one minute. So for 60 seconds, this account will be locked. Next is custom band passwords. Now from here, you can manage the custom band password list. By default, this is set to no, that means it is disabled. If you want to configure this custom band password list, you will click on yes. And here you can enter the terms that you want your users should not use in their passwords. For example, you can add like, test or test at one two three four you can add office at one two three four you can add let me type it again office at one two three four or you can add password at one two three you can even add your company name for example contoso at one two three four so as an administrator what i want Whenever my user will try to change or reset the password or even an administrator will try to create or reset a password for a user, they should not be using this particular term like test, office, password or contoso. Like this, you can add multiple terms here. Next property is for on-premise Active Directory. If you want to enforce Azure Active Directory password policies for the on-premise users, you can set this option to yes. If you want to disable it, you can click on no. 
And next is mode. If you want to apply this policy, you want to enforce it, you can click on enforced. And once you have made the changes, click on save. So this policy is created now and let's log in with one of the users of my tenant. So this user is logged in. Now let's try to change password. So we will go to my account, we will go to password. Here we will type old password and let's try to change password for this one. Control so add one, two, three, four. Click submit. So it says, unfortunately, you can't use that password because it contains words or characters that have been blocked by your administrator. Please try again with a different password. Let's try with another password. Let's say office at 1234. So let me type the old password and let's try with office at 12345. We have added one, two, three, four, and I will try with office at one, two, three, four, five. Click submit. It says choose a password that is harder for people to guess. So this doesn't let me to select any one of these patterns. Now, if I will type a different password altogether, then it should work. So the password is changed for this user because this time I didn't use any one of these password patterns. So this is how you can configure password protection in Azure Active Directory. In the next video, we will be talking about passwordless authentication in Azure Active Directory. We will discuss how to configure passwordless authentication using Microsoft Authenticator app. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, Please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel and please share this channel within your community. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.